My name is Beth Hennessy. I'm professor of psychology at Wellesley College in Wellesley, Massachusetts. But in a former life, I was an elementary school teacher trained in something very akin to what used to be called the open classroom approach. We called it integrated day. And under this system, I taught kindergarten first and second graders in a single classroom. That meant I stayed with children for three years, got to know them super well. It was a wonderful time in my life and a great privilege. But as I went on in teaching, I started to become more and more worried about my children's motivation and creativity, or better said, lack thereof. As kindergartners, they were raring to go. They were enthusiastic about almost anything I suggested. They came up with fantastic solutions to problems and their imaginations were running wild. But those same kids, many of them, by the time they were finishing second grade, had lost a lot of that willingness to take risks and try new things. And I started really worrying about what it was about my classroom or classrooms in general that slowly but surely was killing kids' motivation and creativity. So I decided I needed to figure this out. I went back to graduate school and some 35 years later, we're still working hard to answer the question of how can we set up classrooms at all grade levels so that they're optimally conducive to children's, students' motivation and creativity. We've learned a lot. We understand that motivation and creativity go hand in hand. You're going to be very unlikely to come up with a creative idea or solution to a problem if you're not intrinsically motivated, if you're not engaged in that problem solving or that activity for the sheer pleasure and enjoyment and challenge of the problem itself rather than for some extrinsic goal like someone's offering you a reward or you have an evaluation hanging over your head. The bad news is we've found that in the United States and around the world, many of the procedures that teachers are trained to use to motivate students are exactly opposite to what they should be doing. We found through experimentation with students and adults of all ages and all walks of life that there are at least five surefire killers of intrinsic motivation and creativity. Promise someone a reward for what they're doing. Set up an expectation of evaluation. Limit their choices, limit their time, or breathe down their necks, peer over their shoulders, and engage in surveillance. Unfortunately, this list of recipes for how to kill intrinsic motivation and creativity reads almost just like the recipe for how to set up the typical classroom. So the applied message in my work, which now has extended beyond U.S. classrooms to classrooms around the world, is that if you really want as a teacher, as a parent, as an employer for creativity and motivation to flourish, you need to rely on your students or your employees' own intrinsic interest, their own passions, their own incentives, rather than loading on extrinsic constraints from the outside. <laughs>